Hello everyone and welcome. I'm coming back with a new video today. At this time I'm bringing you my March 2021 bullet journal setup and I'm starting right away with the monthly cover on the right page. This month I wanted to include green into the color palette so I went with a fairy enchanted forest theme and I incorporated some brown, gray and gold as well. I started by writing down March in a very simple, minimal, elongated cursive font with my black gel pen and I thickened up the downstrokes to make the title stand out just a little bit more. I then proceeded to make out the outline for the main illustration of this spread and I decided to draw a fairy sitting on top of a mushroom while contemplating some fireflies. I didn't add much detail to the physical features of anything in particular, so this relies heavily on the silhouettes. I used references from Amy Brown Fantasy Art on Pinterest to help me figuring out what to do here, so I left a link in the description of their work. I did a grid frame on opposite corners with a grey crayola super tip and then I started to add color to the illustration. For the wings, I use a light green shade to fill them in and a darker shade for the outline to make it more wing-like. I went in again with a lighter shade where both shades met to help blend in the colors and soften the hash lines. I was a little bit worried about the markers bleeding through because this is a rather thin paper. I'm using a minimalism art dot grid notebook and it has 100 GSM paper so sometimes I have to be careful not to go too heavy on these pages, but this ended up just fine. I do however get a lot of ghosting on this notebook, which is not surprising because of the thickness, but I actually don't mind it. I rather have ghosting because I find some sort of satisfaction in being able to tell I'm putting the pages to use. And I know it's not a very popular concept within the Fuji community, but since I don't use a wide range of media in my bullet journal, 100 to 120 GFs in paper gets by very nicely for me. Back to the illustration, I'm coloring in the mushroom with two shades of brown. The darker color I use for the top and the shading is a Crayola Super Tip and the softer brown is a Miniso Double Ended Marker which you can tell is running out. I don't have a similar shade to that one in any other marker, so I was trying to make the most out of it in here. I was planning on using that specific color for the body of the fairy, but I knew it wasn't going to end up looking cute with a dry marker, so I took a brown crawler color pencil and started with a lighter hand and slowly building up the color. I also took the opportunity to go over the mushroom's body because I felt it ended up too splotchy and the pencil helped giving it a more even color surface. I thought about adding some foliage at the bottom and I happened to have these leaf stickers gifted by a lovely friend, so instead of doodling I decided to use those. I think they go nicely with the theme and from this angle they don't even look like stickers because of the translucent borders. Lastly, it was time to include some fireflies flying around and for that I used my gold jelly roll pen and I just did random dots in different sizes all over the drawing. Moving to the left page, this month I included a quote page that goes along with the theme and that is, all you need is faith, trust and a little bit of pixie dust from the Peter Pan movie, which is a nice little childhood memory to have here. I didn't do anything crazy with lettering or anything like that, but I did want to give it some more variation, so I included words in the same cursive font with thicker downstrokes from before. Then I used my Crayola Super Tips to do some calligraphy for the words Faith, Thrust and Pixie Dust, switching between the colors of the palette. And finally, for the words Need and Little, I took out my Alphabet stamps, doing them in all caps. To add a little bit more spice, I used my black gel pen for some drop shadows on the calligraphy words. I used to not be very fan of gold pages in my bullet journal, especially because I wasn't confident in my hand lettering, but now I find them exciting to do. I think of them as another type of creative outlet and they're just a fun way to fill in a blank page that otherwise would have been left empty. To finish this off, I included some highlights to the calligraphy with my gold gel pen, added some fireflies, and used a couple stickers for more decoration. 
the next thread is my monthly overview and this month I'm going back to a full two page calendar with my two regular sections for notes and weekly tasks. I always try to incorporate elements from the team that I chose to the actual layout and sections in my spreads, so this will be a more decorative calendar. I actually wanted to draw a fairy house for the cover page, but since I was having a difficult time with it, I scrapped that idea and went with something simpler as you've seen it, but I still had that lingering desire to somehow include one in my setup, or at least something alluding to it. This is how I came up with this concept of having these sections looking like fairy house windows. What I did to sort of accomplish that was to draw these vines interwining in between the window frame. To draw the vines I took a green marker and started dabbing randomly and repeatedly at a specific sections at a time until I was satisfied with how it looked. This may appear like it's time saving, especially because of the sped up footage but I found that if you overthink it, it can add up. So I will just say it's better to let it flow. It's not a detailed process, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I purposely started with the vines because I wanted to have a better picture of the placement for the window frame, since I didn't want to have black ink going over the trailing plant. For the oval art structure, I drew long and thin pieces of wood for the framing, adding some wood texture along the way. I'm an avid ruler user, but for this specific part, I decided it was better for me to do it freehand, although I did bring in my ruler to do the inner daily boxes, since this is supposed to be the window glass. I left the notes sections empty because I need that space to write thoughts down, and for the other section, I included some divisions because I used this as my weekly tasks checklist. You can see I was also being careful not to go over the vines that were in between the glass and for the headers, instead of doing a regular piece of wood, I drew a plank of wood to have enough space to write down its section's titles. I had some extra space on the right side of the spread and I used it to write down March in the same title style that I've been doing. Then I colored in the window frame with a dark brown, skipping the green areas and filling in the wood plank headers. Going back to the ghosting TED talk, here you can see clear as day how much of that I get in these pages. Although I had an artificial light casting upon the notebook, this is very accurate. I think this is on the edge of what I can still enjoy. I know it bothers some people, but I don't know what's about it, this somehow makes me really happy when looking at it. After going over with the brown marker, I noticed I had more blank gaps than what I expected so I filled them in with the green marker by thickening these vines. I went heavier on the outsides of the window than on the glass, since I had to be mindful of the space that I would need to write down important dates and events. I didn't want to disturb the window illusion too much, so I wrote down the number of the days on the bottom right corner with a thin tip of my soft brown miniso marker. Above March, I added a grid frame as well as this beautiful leaf sticker then I started to draw different size dots for the fireflies. I also used my gold gel pen to write down its section's titles, and I thought it wasn't going to show up nicely on top of the brown, but I'm glad to be proving wrong this time. My wild jelly roll doesn't do well on top of Crayola super tips, so it's nice to see that the gold one works fine. As the final touch to this thread, I added drop shadows to the headers to give them a little bit of hump and help them stand out some more. And now it's time for my tracker pages. I'm starting with my moods on the left side with a title and then making out the outline for the illustration. For this month's mood tracker, I'm drawing a fairy sitting on a wooden swing with its back towards me so we can see its spread wings on full view. The pattern of the wings is what I'm going to be using to track my mood through March, so I made sure to have 31 divisions in the design. Since 31 isn't an even number, I had to split it at 15 sections on the left and 16 on the other side, but you'll see that it's not that noticeable. 
This is going to be the third month that I'll be tracking my mood daily and it's been helping me a lot in terms of self-awareness and I can see this spread being a permanent one in my bullet journal by now. At the bottom, I included a space for the color coding that I'm going to use. Although I'll add the actual colors after I finish with other details on the drawing. I'm still using the same dark brown for the wood. And for the fairy's body, I took out the brown colored pencil I used for the cover page illustration. Although I really enjoy the final results I get after using colored pencils, I must say it gives me a lot of hand cramps. So whenever I'm using them on a larger area like this, I tend to go softer and building up the color very slowly until I'm satisfied with the opacity. Otherwise, I think we'll be here for much longer. Right after this, I added the color palette going from a really bad day with a darker brown to a really nice day with a darker green. I still included the dry out soft brown marker even though I'm running out because this is the second shade I finished off from the pack so I'm thinking of getting a replacement soon. As a final little detail for the wings, I remember watching a tutorial from Amanda Ratchley on Instagram about how to draw butterflies and she suggests to round off the edges of the pattern on the wings so that's what I'm doing here. We're moving right away to the habits, which I decided to title as trackers from now on because now I'm tracking my headaches daily and that's obviously not a habit, so this title felt more appropriate. I have 9 subjects to keep track of and now it's more difficult to add drawings or doodles to this spread, so I decided that the way I'm going to incorporate the theme had to be through the headers. Similar to my monthly overview, I'm drawing some vines coming out of each header and those are going to be made out of a plank of wood. I started with the vines again so I could see where not to go over with the brown and went over with the green once again to fill in the white spots. I'm always doing this type of layout with individual calendars for each subject because I've learned that this is the most efficient for me and even if I do crave some change sometimes, I have to use my other spreads for that since I can see myself doing another kind of tracking. I've tried other alternatives before and none of them worked as well as this one, so I guess I'm going to have to be more creative with what I have here with this specific layout. To write down each subject, I used my gold gel pen and added some drop shadows later on as well. These are the same items I kept track of last month and those are for each day I exercise, read, post on Instagram, I eat no junk or fast food, waking up early, headaches, flossing, and the days I do my skincare routine. After this, it was time to add the calendars and I started by stamping the days of the week with my clear calendar stamp set. I really love these stamps. Ever since I got them, I can shut up about them because they're such handy bullet journaling tools. I'm finishing these threads with some fireflies and adding a couple of stickers where I could find some extra blank space. The next spread is a two pages rain dump and from this point forward it's going to get very repetitive, so excuse me if I do skip some parts for the sake of this video. Since I need a brain dump to allow me to write down as much as I need to, I have to keep it as simple as possible, but I still like incorporating my theme somehow. This time I did a wood frame with the vines, so I can have the middle section for my thoughts and ideas for March. To add a little bit of something else, I also did the grid frame I've been doing in all of my pages in opposite corners across the spread. I wrote down the title with the thicker downstrokes and after coloring in the wood, I went ahead and added a sticker on the bottom left corner and finished the spread with the fireflies. I always try to keep the random pages as minimal as I can and before I used to go overboard but slowly I've been learning when to stop. Next up, it's a playlist spread. I don't fill this in fully because I like this page to reflect what I'm into during the current month and maybe add some new music I found through March. 
However, I do still like setting this up ahead of time just because I find this thread so fun to make and it also helps not having this randomly interrupting the flow of my weekly spreads later on. For each song I'll include in here, I made separate wood frames with the vines decorating every section and I wish I had made this more similar to my monthly overview with just the wooden borders around and the middle section divided by straight lines since that would have saved me a lot of time but I guess this will look really nice once it's completed. I left the right page blank on purpose because I had it reservated for something else but since I hadn't figured out the layout I decided to skip it. We are now at the last pages for this setup and that is the first weekly spread for March. This is pretty much what I did for the playlist but make it 4x4 sections on each page. Honestly I was running out of ideas at this point and I just went with what I had been doing throughout this setup and since I chose this very cool weekly layout, using the same frame concept just made sense. I think this is one of the most efficient layouts since it allows a lot of planning space for every single day and you also get an extra section that you can use however you may need. I particularly liked to add a mini calendar to my weekly spreads to have a good reference of what week I'm currently in, so that's what I use the extra section for. Since I get a little bit of more space, I also like to add a couple of doodles, but this time I included one of the leaf stickers. Now that the setup is complete, I will show you the final flip through. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so please leave a like or a comment down below. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you everyone for watching, until the next video.